if this book exists, you're in the wrong universe. Date unknown. Time unknown. Pies. Collected. Unknown of one quadrillion. Wait, anyway, is it quadrillion or quad million? <laughs> Hang on. Quadrillion, okay. <laughs> Date unknown. Time unknown. Pies. Collected. Unknown of one quadrillion. Me. The bright thing in the sky remained, but had frozen in place. The sound of crushed air had been abruptly muted. The dark orb, now occupying the platform in the center of the pool, sat still and silent. I turned to say something to Amy and saw that she was a statue, individual strands of copper hair hanging still in midair. Time had stopped. A voice said, And so we arrive here again. The time captain strode casually into the scene, strolling between the corpses in the grass like it was something he'd done a thousand times before. I said, Okay, what the fuck? I'm sure you have many questions. Really just the one. Your one question is, what the fuck? You want me to elaborate? If you have the power to pause the entire goddamned universe, can you bring back John? If he is dead, is he dead? He is, as are you and everyone in the vicinity. And yes, there is a way to bring you back, all of you. But as I tried to warn you earlier, it is not simple, and it is not assured. I said, great, let's do it. I'm sure you're eager to know what transpired here and what it means. Not really. Bring John back and you can tell me your whole life story. If you don't bring him back, you can go strap on a bib and eat a giant sloppy bag of fat dicks because I don't give a shit about any of the rest of this. This is your last chance. Once I do it, you will not be able to ask me questions. All right. So, the object frozen in the sky that appears to be about one second away from killing us the moment somebody unfreezes time, your space weapon, how widespread is its damage? Like, how far away do we need to get from it next time? The man glanced up at the burning projectile hanging above us. It looked like an angel was cutting open the sky with a blowtorch. The town will be a crater, along with the surrounding landscape. That object, by the way, is a gift from Project Thor. Your tax dollars helped pay for it. Well, other people's tax dollars. That projectile, a massive tungsten rod, was fired from a Black Project satellite that was launched by the U.S. military five years ago. That piece of metal will hit at a speed in excess of Mach 10. The velocity carries enough energy to impact like a tactical nuclear warhead. It was ostensibly designed to penetrate the buried bunkers of rogue nations. It will dig itself 200 feet into the earth, but certain people at very high levels know that it can be used in other circumstances, if the situation warrants it. The government will have a cover story ready to go in the aftermath. Yeah, I was about to say it looked like Tunston. But it's not going to take out Sebastian, right? Otherwise, you'd have just let it fall. Boom. Problem solved. He nodded. Bass transported himself and his sister to a safe distance. His biography will one day claim that stunned witnesses watched him walk directly out of the rubble unharmed. Which is true. There will be video. But it will only be because he transports himself back to ground zero immediately after the danger is over. He will become an icon. His movement will spread around the globe, and, generations from now, the Zarkrax process will complete itself on schedule. So, how do we fix all of this? You already know. I can take you back to any point of your choosing, but you must stop Sebastian. Your enemy, meanwhile, will be working every step of the way to arrive at the same point, regardless of what path you take to get here. The same as how a turd will wind up in this facility, no matter what toilet it gets dropped into. So you could rewind several hours, long enough for us to try to come up with a different strategy. Wait, no. If Amy wasn't frozen, she'd say that's not good enough. Several people had died by that point. So I think we have to go back to before we even got the call from the Galvatrons. So we can save the cops, all the rest. But then again, that's what we did last... 
<sighs> okay, back up. I had to stop and think for a minute. Finally, I said, To be clear, you would be giving us our third chance, right? Because we already figured out this was our second time around. So you and I have had this conversation before. The man's only response was a kind of tragic smile. I stared at him, then sat down on the catwalk. I let out a long breath and turned my face up to the sky, toward the bright death poised above us. I said, We've had this conversation a bunch of times, haven't we? We have. How many? That's not relevant. If you are successful, all timelines will be overwritten by the one. None of this will have happened. The dead you see around you, the soon-to-be dead, all will live and be none the wiser. You said I could go back to any point in the past. Can I go back to childhood? Relive my whole life from the start? Avoid all my mistakes? Become some kind of successful, productive human being? Make it so that by the time I get here, I have all sorts of skills and habits that actually make me an asset to society? You can, but keep in mind, you will have no memories of the years hence, outside of a vague sense of familiarity and dreams that twist the remembered reality into shapes you won't recognize. Have I tried that before? Rewinding my whole life? In the previous attempts, I mean. You have. Sometimes to positive results, up to a point. Sometimes, branching possibilities along the way turn the world into something very different from what you know. But, as we have repeated the process, I believe we have dialed in on an optimal moment for Rewind and a singular key to success. I know you don't remember the uh, many other tries, but I do. This is the part where you express doubt, or even accuse me of being in on it, because that's who you are. And I always have to convince you that you have no real choice but to trust me. Either we go back, or everyone here is vaporized in a microsecond. I sighed in resignation, studying the Amy statue as if I could detect some kind of subtle movement that could be taken as advice. Okay, I said. So, take me back to this optimal moment. Early Saturday morning. I nodded. Just before the mother asks us to intervene, right? But we have to get a message back this time. We have to have something to work with. Otherwise, we're just taking shots in the dark. He nodded impatiently. How many times have we had this exact exchange? As always, he said, there is a window of about a half a minute in which I can become physically present in that time period before fading out again. It's enough time to impart a few sentences of instructions. No more. They must be simple, as I won't have time to repeat them. Having done this repeatedly, I can tell you that the instructions that bring you closest to success on a consistent basis boil down to little more than you have been given a chance to undo your previous failure, and you must kill Sebastian at all costs. And those instructions are delivered to John, not you. Why him? Because we have found that, with zero exceptions, if I appear in your presence out of thin air, you will physically attack me until I fade out again, hearing nothing of what I say. This is true even if I appear to you in childhood. Yeah, that sounds about right. But in that case, give him different instructions this time. Tell him to stay away. Tonight, I mean. So he doesn't end up getting wizard murdered again. We'll handle it without him. I can tell you with absolute certainty that such a message will not be heeded on his part. I considered this for a moment before it fully hit me. If I've asked to give that message before, I said, it means he's died here before, right? He said nothing, just gave me a knowing look. I said, it always winds up like this, doesn't it? With John, I mean. Usually long before now, but if not, then yes. Right around this point, every time, if this task will be accomplished, it has to be you. No, there has to be a way. 
And I mean a way that gets everyone through alive, including John. There has to be. Why does there have to be? Because fuck you, that's why. Do your thing. Turn back the clock. Tell John that we're getting an another chance. And this time, none of the other bullshit with the toy matters. That we can't stop the collection of the parts. We have to focus on Bass from the start and never let up. If there isn't time to say all that, then, I don't know, talk fast. He said, After you. And gestured toward the black sphere hovering at the center of the pool. What, we're going to walk into that? That, said the time captain, is the reason I can do this at all. The summoning is about gaining power to rewrite the timeline. But in creating this weapon, Zarkrax has also created the means by which it can be undone. I was shown this moment in a vision, what feels like many lifetimes ago, and shown how to manipulate this mechanism to our own ends. Who showed it to you? Somebody who's on our side? I have been reliving this cycle for a very long time, and I am no closer to knowing the answer to that question than when I started. I have come to believe that the universe itself is guiding us, perhaps operating out of a sense of self-preservation. So, you're stuck in this loop, watching me fuck this up over and over again. Jesus, you must want to just slap the shit out of me. You have no idea. And yes, I am stuck in this loop, and I presumably will be, until we either resolve it or run out of chances. I assure you, I would give anything to be free of this. But my needs are nothing in the grand scheme of things. He once again gestured toward the sphere and said, After you. I stepped forward. Somewhere in the back of my mind was a tickle of doubt, a suspicion that I had been backed into this particular corner by design. The feeling was familiar to me probably because I'd been feeling it my whole life. I had to scoot around the Amy statue and step over John's frozen corpse to get to the big black magic sphere. As I approached, I again had that sensation of timeliness and possibilities flashing through my mind, seeing myself approaching this orb again and again in varying clothes and physical conditions and amounts of body fat, sometimes wounded, sometimes with Amy sometimes alone. The time captain appeared next to me. He did some time captain shit with his hands, and the black sphere expanded to engulf us and the entire pool, maybe the whole world. I again had that sensation of information leaving my mind, of experiences dissolving like smoke rings, a vague sense of mourning the loss of a person I had become but was no longer. Familiar walls formed around us, and I turned to see John lying there on the catwalk. Only now, a bed was fading into existence under him, the time captain standing next to it. Walls grew around us, covered in framed posters for John's various bands. I had the strangest feeling, like I was fading as the room and bed were becoming solid. I was in the wrong spot. I needed to be rewound back to my kitchen floor less than 70 hours ago eating old pizza and vacantly scrolling on my phone. I felt a tug like an ocean current, urging me backward through time. I sensed plants getting sucked into the earth. Larva, larvae, larva? Larva getting pulled back into their eggs. Millions of turds shooting back through these drain pipes and flying up into assholes. But for just the briefest moment, while I was still in John's bedroom, watching a duvet cover fade into existence over the man himself. I saw a speck of white. It was floating past me, like a single petal from a dogwood tree carried on the wind. It was moving steadily toward the time captain, and just before the world was taken from my view, I made out what it was. A white mouse, scurrying along John's floor, toward the time captain's polished black shoes. The mouse reached his right foot and climbed up onto the cuff of his pants. The man reacted with mild confusion, but not alarm. It was, after all, just a mouse. Nothing you wouldn't find in any random house that surely had plenty of crumbs on the floor. He shook the mouse off his pant leg, knocking it back a couple of feet. Then, the mouse righted itself, charging back toward the same shoe. The time captain took a single step back away from the weirdly persistent rodent. Then, 
kicked at it in annoyance. The mouse stopped, but did not retreat. It was just staring, waiting. The walls were becoming solid now, which meant I was losing sight of them as I was becoming less solid at the same rate. But in that brief window of time, I noted that because of that single step backward, the time captain was now standing too close to the wall, was standing inside of it. He was speaking words I could not hear. Then it all went away, and my last thought before being yanked out of that time stream was that once that wall became fully solid, the front third of the time captain would slide wetly to the floor like a sliced roast beef. I had time to think. He's finally free. Before it all went away.